a question for Matt, please put in the chat. We'll get to those in the order they received. Take our first question from Chris McCoskey of the Detroit News. Hey, Matt. Um, it looked like you figured something out there, maybe in, in late in the second, in the third and fourth innings for sure. Um, what, what was that, if that's true? Because you're much more efficient in those innings. Yeah. Um, honestly, it was just after the first two hitters of the game. Um, I just, uh, you know, I just uh, – First two hitters, I just didn't have the same finish on the bat, on the fastball, and uh, we made the adjustment and um, just got right to it. And uh, after the after the first two, you know, I mean, we got more efficient as it went on. Um, but uh, obviously, put yourself in a pretty big hole there throwing, you know, 60, 70 pitches in the first two innings, right? It's a uh, it's it's a hole for everybody in there. So um, you know, had to be a little more efficient in there. Um, you know. Game's gonna happen, whatever it may be, right? Um, long at bats and all, but you got to do your best to mitigate that and get early contact and get early outs when it's when it's possible. And a big key in that is getting ahead in the counts. And uh, you know, we just we, we kept going along and made adjustments and uh, did what we could with what we had today. Is is your frustration um, getting up there uh, with this? Are you, are you are you just still seeing incremental incremental progress? It, I mean, there's a lot of progress, Chris, and I'm not going to sit up here and, you know, you know, be all sunshine and rainbows. You know, we lost seven to two today, you know, and I gave up three runs, right? That's one, two. If, if I went, the, if I gave up three runs and went nine innings, that's one too many. We still lost. Um, but there's a lot of progress. Um, and, uh, and I, I think if you, I mean, you guys can write about it, but uh, there's a lot of progress in there if you look in the right spots. So uh, um, we're going to continue to get better. Um, I'm working every day at it, and uh, today was a step in the right direction. Um, needs, you know, there's there's still things I can get better at, and I will continue to. But, uh, um, you know, I mean, you guys write the stories, right? So, you know, you guys can decipher what what, what you want from that. But, uh, you know, there's obviously room for me to get better. There always will be, and uh, just continue down. And you know, getting better every single day. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Our next question comes from Jason Beck from MLB.com. Yeah, hi, Matt. Thanks for doing this. Uh, it looked like you threw a few more change-ups there those last couple innings. Um, how did that, you know, did that come about by design? And was that something, the results, was, was that something to build off of, specifically off that change-up? Was that encouragement for you? Completely. Um, you know, we established the fastball first time through the order, and then we went to the change-up after that. You know, probably could have had a few more instances. There's a few instances in the first time through the we probably could have thrown the changeup. But uh, what made the changeup so good is that we established the fastball early on. And then off that, you know, it made it better going forward, even in the, in the, in the, in the following innings. Now, there's some at-bats in there. You, know, you could argue both at-bats that Anderson probably could have mixed in another changeup here or there. That might have had a different result. But, uh, you know, first two at-bats were the ones that I was really frustrated about the uh, at bat to Anderson, that second home run, man, hats off to him. I threw my pitch, he hit it. Maybe I should throw a different one next time in that situation. Um, you know, or maybe try to get ahead and not be in a three-two count. Uh, lots of things that can be different in that uh, in that at bat. But um, you know, Romy, Romy did a great job. Um, called a great game. You know, the one, the one thing that you really want to take away from is be a little more efficient. But we established the fastball, it made the slider good, it made the changeup good, and uh, I mean, probably, you know. Could even mix them more curveballs, but it, it was it was what it was, right? The, the the if there was a you know, there's one thing to take away from it's you, you look back at those first two innings in the in the pitch count and you go, okay, where could I have trimmed it down, right? And it's and it's some of it's like okay, get ahead, you know, some stuff is going to happen, errors are going to happen, in the game. you know, everybody's human, just you know, so it's making it's like okay, well, how can you mitigate that? You know, a ten plus pitch at bat to Encarnacion. Um, did I get too fine with that? Stay on the attack a little bit more here and there. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, step in the right direction today. And the uh, the second home run from Anderson, I got to think the frustration level is pretty high on there, just him going opposite field like that off that pitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was. You know, it's do the pitch where I wanted to, um, do it how I wanted to, but – Probably could have set him up differently in that situation. You know, probably could have mixed in a change up that at bat. We we really got 
fastball slider happy, just like we did the first time through. And uh, I mean, saw what we did when we threw the chip up the next at bat. It was just a weak ground ball to third. So, um, you know, uh, it's going to happen, right? You know, it's the, that's, that's baseball. Um, uh, given the situation of everything over the, you know, things like that might be a little more amplified, but um, you know, he hit a good pitch. He's a batting champion last year. That's off to him, right? You know, and that's, uh, I'm, I'm going to keep going about my game and uh, keep getting better at it. And, you know, I know you've got a lot of, a lot of work you'll, you'll want to do between starts, but you've got two pitchers making their major league debuts the next couple of nights. How much do you become kind of a, pseudo pitching coach or mentor the next couple of nights watching what they do and trying to see what what you might be able to help out with them on oh man um well, i'm lucky we have a great pitching coach i don't need to be a pitching coach because we got a great one in rick anderson so uh you know uh, i i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be just another pitcher and a teammate and uh you know like i said i get to learn from these guys too they're very talented very very talented pitchers um you know they're they're going out there and doing their thing, right? They're, you know, it's going to be fun to watch. You know, it's well-deserved and well-earned that they're here. They're going to make us a better team. Um, it's why they are here. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to sit and learn from them as well. So it's going to be fun to watch. Excited to see Tarek throw tomorrow and uh, Casey the following day. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Our next question comes from Cody Stavenhagen from The Athletic. Hey, Matt, uh, real quick, it looks like you did have 10 swings and misses on your slider. Do you think there was anything specific that led to that pitch, uh, you know, generating that swing and miss? Is that one of the things you were you felt good about tonight? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, anytime you get 10 swing and misses on that and, you know, nine strikeouts, you're doing something right in the game. You, know, you don't just kind of fall into that. Um, so uh, there are lots of adjustments that we we – not lots of adjustments. There's just a few little things that we did. And one of them was, you know, uh, staying with my, my posture. That's something that we did this last going into the first start against Chicago. Um, you know, there's a few, like, I, you know, another thing was, uh, you know, keeping the weight back on the heel and staying on top of the ball. And we stay on top of the ball and through the ball, you know, everything comes out of that tunnel the right way. I think if you look at the swing and misses on the slider and the changeup and the fastball tonight, um, or just, you know, the lack of, hard contact on that pitch, you know, probably after the first two hitters. Um, it kind of tells you what everything was doing, right? Um, and uh, it was it was good, you know, something that we just really worked on was just staying behind the baseball and staying through it. And uh, the product of that was, you know, what you saw tonight with that. You know, it, was, it, was a, it was a lot of good, you know. It wasn't good enough to win the ball game, but, you know, this, uh, I'm telling you, we're, we're getting better every single day. And mark my words, it's going to be better than it ever was before. All right, that's all good to know. Thanks so much, Matt. Okay. Thanks, Cody. That looks like the last question we have. So, Matt, thank you for your time this evening. we are joined by Isak Paredes in just a moment. Thank you, guys. MLB.com. Uh, hi, Isak. Um, just wondering what your nerves were like when you come up there with the bases loaded against a veteran pitcher like Gio Gonzalez. and um, Just how did that un unbat unfold for you and uh, what were you focusing on? ¿Cómo fue cómo estuvieron tus nervios a la hora de enfrentarte a un veterano como Diego González con las bases llenas y cómo fue ese turno para ti? Algo muy 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 nervioso para mí. Este, era mi, mi primer turno en Grandes Ligas, el primer turno estaba nervioso, pero era lo que quería, no para verme la casa bateo, para ver lo que se siente, que se sentía y, y Y claro, ¿no? Eh, llevarlo a cabo después de ahí a todos los turnos, pero sabía que tenía que responder, no se pudo, pero gracias, gracias a Dios al segundo turno resolvimos, ¿no? Que era, que es lo más importante. Um, I was pretty nervous, you know, on my first at bat, I just wanted to step on the plate and know what it feels to be on a home plate, have in, in a batter's box in a major league field. Obviously, I was pretty nervous, and I, and I just wanted to know what was going on. So the first at bat, I couldn't do what I wanted, but in the second at bat, fortunately, I I was more comfortable, and I and I, and I got it. And uh, did you get the ball back from that hit? And what's it feeling like to get a two-run single for your first major league uh, base knock? Te dieron la pelota, y qué se siente tener en tu primer imparable dos carreras impulsadas en la liga. 
Pues, primero que nada, sentí bonito porque estaba ayudando al equipo, el juego estaba cerrado y, y nos acercamos con ese hit. Eso fue emoción y después lo individual, ¿no? Que, que es mi primer hit en Grandes Ligas, se siente muy bonito, como un sueño, la verdad. Ah, uh, yeah, it felt, it felt pretty good. Uh, I, it, felt, it felt pretty, in fact, because I was helping, I was helping the team, the game was closed, and now, personally, it's, it's pretty. Uh, having an opportunity to get out of my first base hit in Major League Baseball. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Our next question comes from Evan Petzold of the Detroit Free Press. Hey, I uh, wanted to know, is this kind of uh, everything that, it, you know, you expected it to be, you know, growing up and uh, waiting for this opportunity? Is this, uh, is this all you hope for? Fue como te lo imaginabas cuando crecías de niño y te desarrollaste, estar en grandes ligas y tener tus primeros tu primer juegos, ¿fue como lo pensaba? No, no, no fue como lo pensaba. Este, la mentalidad era ganar y, y no ganamos. Este, lo individual a mí no me importa, o sea, me importaba ganar el juego y, y no, no lo individual. Así que no, no me siento tan bien con eso. Uh, no, en fact, no, my mentality was to win a game and, uh, and we didn't. Uh, we couldn't win the game, so my, the individual stuff was secondary to the first or the main goal, which is which it was winning the game. So it wasn't as I expected. And I wanted to ask too: anybody, uh, any teammates, talk to you before the game and, and give you any advice on on anything? Algún compañero antes del partido te dio algún consejo o recomendación previo al juego? Sí, claro, no. Este Harold, este Miggy, Ramón Santiago me dijeron que era como un juego más, como, como que, que lo agarrara como si estuviera jugando en una liga invernal en México. Este, y, y, y oh, yo estaba nervioso. Este, yo, yo, yo no les creí que, 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 no, que, no, que era igual que en México. Pero ya cuando estaba ahí en el momento, solamente pensé disfrutarlo como ellos me dijeron y, y pensar que era un juego más. No, you know, Harold, Castro, Miguel, and Ramón. They told me that it was it's just another game, it, but it was like playing back in Mexico. So, but obviously I was nervous. Uh, I didn't believe then that it was just a game as in Mexico. But in the moment, I just I just went with the flow and enjoy it, and that's what I did. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Evan. Our next question comes from Cody Stavenhagen from the Athletic. Hey, Isaac, what was it like when you were able to tell your, your friends and family that you were getting called up, and do you know if any of them were able to watch you tonight? ¿Cómo, cómo va a eh, decirle a tus familiares y amigos que, que te llamaron y que, a quienes llamaste para decirles que estaban en grandes ligas y que te vieron jugar el día de hoy? Pues le, le dije a toda mi familia, este, a mis amigos, ellos sabían pues, por medio de redes sociales y, y creo yo que, que ellos están emocionados, al igual que yo, ¿no? De, de poder hacer un debut en, en Grandes Ligas. Este, creo que van a estar muy contentos con eso. Uh, yo no. You know, I told everybody, my family, my friends, uh, most of them knew because of social media. So they were excited just like I, like I was. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure they are as happy as I am for having my debut in the Mayors. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Cody. If there are any other questions for Isak, please put those in the chat. Go to Jason Beck from NLE.com. Yeah, uh, just to follow up, uh, I was wondering, you know, what kind of challenge it is in the major leagues to go from seeing, you know, kind of a control artist like Gonzalez to the hard throwing relievers that they brought out against you. Quería saber eh, cómo fue hacer esa transición de, de batearle a un lanzador tan controlado como Gio González a los tirapiedras que eran los relevistas que trajeron ellos después. No, este, en México estamos acostumbrados a, a, a batearle a, a jugadores con experiencia que están retirados de grandes ligas y, y, y obvio no llevaba mi mentalidad de, de saber que me estaba enfrentando un pitcher de grandes ligas del momento, pero yo ya he enfrentado a, a pitcher con esa misma característica. Uh, you know, back in Mexico, we were used to taking at bats in front of uh, experienced guys from MLB, veterans guys who used to play in the Major League Baseball. And I, I brought a mentality of uh, knowing that I was facing a Major Leaguer, but I already did it before when I was back in Mexico when we were facing veterans down there. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. We'll take one more from Evan Woodbury from MLive.
Evan, I think there's another, I think there's an issue with the microphone. <laughs> Uh, so the question from Evan is, does he know Luis Gonzalez from the White Sox? You know, I heard of him on social media, and then I realized that we were from the same city, and uh, we played little league in the same league uh, uh, back there, back in the day. But uh, you know, I'm proud of that. My people, it's uh, fulfilling their dreams, and they are here. Thank you, Evan. Uh, looks like all the questions you have. So, Isak, thank you for your time, and congratulations again. Uh, we'll see everybody uh, for for tomorrow's game. Take care. Hi everyone. Uh, good good evening. We're joined by Tigers manager Ron Gardenhire. If you have a question for Gardy, please put in the chat, and we'll get to those in the order they're received. Um, Ben's going to go through and make sure everybody has permission to record that needs it. We just ask you to keep your microphone on mute to avoid any background noise. And we'll get started here in just a second. Good to go, Chad. Okay. All right, we'll take our first question from Chris McCoskey for the Detroit News. Gardy, um, six straight loss, Crone out of the lineup, Goody out of the lineup. Are you starting to sense that some of these guys, are, the younger guys especially, might be trying to press and do more than they're capable of? I'm thinking of maybe Jamer and maybe Jacoby even tonight. Well, I'm not sure about all that. I just uh, – uh, I know that we're not – not scoring a lot of runs right now. When we do score, we go back out and have long innings. So, you know, our starting pitcher, you know, he had, I think his last inning or so, two innings were okay, but the first two, you're talking almost 60 pitches or somewhere in there and got up to whatever. I, I think he threw almost 90 pitches in four innings. And that's just a long time standing around out there and that takes your offense out. And I think Maddie knows that. Uh, like I said, he got a little better there at the end, which was, you know, started really getting the ball and going after them. And, but it's just one of those games. And then, you know, they added on to our, against our kids. We made some mistakes. They put a lot of balls in the seats, but we're just, I mean, we know that we've got, you know, a starter tomorrow that's probably ready for 40 to 50 pitches. So probably another 40 innings. I mean, four, I mean, uh, four innings. So we got to do to our bullpen again. So these things are all adding up. We got to find a way. We got a lot of games in a row here and, Got to find ways to get to the second half of the game with our starters more than anything else. Um, again, I'm, I'm probably hypersensitive to this kind of stuff, but Miggy's last at bat, it looked like he, he, he tweaked something or he, he winced a little bit and shook out his knee. Are you, are you looking at him at all? Is, did you he's notice cramping. that? He's cramping. Oh, okay. Cramping up in his calf and cramping up in his hamstring a little bit, but he was fine. It's just all about, you know, taking fluids and all those things. Uh, uh, but that's all that was going on with him. I talked to him about it, and he said he's fine. He just had some cramps. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Our next question comes from Jason Beck from MLB.com. Yeah, hey, Gardy. Um, you know, for a second major league at bat, you know, I know we've all heard about uh, Brady's play discipline, but that looked like a great at bat he had against – a veteran pitcher like Gonzalez before getting that uh, two-run single. How impressed were you by the discipline? Um, you know, I said all along, this kid knows how to play. He's played a lot of games. You know, he's a young man, but he's played a lot of games down in his native country, down in Mexico, and against some talented people and pitchers that know how to spin the ball. So he's not overwhelmed by any means being out there. And, he made one bad throw where he kind of caught it and nonchalanted it and ended up bouncing in the dirt. But other than that, he actually played pretty good defense too. He's got a great set of hands. So he's, you know, for being whatever, 23 years old or whatever it is, a pretty mature kid. And I don't think he had any fear tonight at all. And uh, just wondering what you saw from Boyd's pitches tonight. It looked like he paid for some fastballs over the plate and then 
it looked like the last couple innings he was working in the changeup a little bit more. Yeah, he didn't hardly use the changeup at all. That's kind of the problem uh, early in the game. And then he brought it in the last couple of innings and the changeup was going down and he had some success. So I, you know, don't really know where that was going, but when Andy talked to him about it, that's what they did. And once he started throwing that change up, he, all of a sudden he started giving people out. So just can't forget about pitches like that. And, you know, that's why I said mentally he's been fighting it and we just got to get him over that hump. Uh, the mental part, things are going through his head out there and he's not using those, his arsenal. Uh, so hopefully, you know, he'll realize after he did the last two innings, that changeup has got to be used. So we'll see. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. We'll go back to Chris McCoskey from the Detroit News. Yeah, you tried to get Funkhauser to a second inning there. Um, I know I know Anthony Castro's still there fresh too, but are you going to need reinforcements for that bullpen just given what you got you know, throwing in the next couple games? Well, I mean – we saved a few people that pitched yesterday. We didn't want to use Brian, but we started getting Anthony up. But, you know, that wasn't going to – it's going to take him a little bit longer than the other guys. So we just had to get out of that inning. So we brought Brian in there and just let him finish off the inning. We did not want to use him there. But, um, you know, we, uh, we're we working on it. It's not easy. Like I said, we, we have to get more than four innings out of our starters. And we have to start getting to the second – half of the game. Tomorrow's not going to be one of those, but after that, we need better start pitching that way. We can kind of figure out our bullpen and get them straightened back out. We had a good run going early um, and we're able to use them the right way. Right now, it just turns into just get through the ball game, and I hate playing baseball like that. Yeah. Uh, are you kind of expecting Buck to be back tomorrow, Wednesday? He'll be back here in a couple of days. Okay. Thanks. Got to be down there for 10, so count those out. It was Wednesday, yeah. Thanks. Okay. And that's probably when, but I can't make that announcement right now. Thanks, Chris. The next question comes from Evan Petzold of the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Ron. Looking at, at Matthew Boyd tonight, it seems like, you know, kind of the same message um, ever since the season started was looking at him trying to improve and him trying to figure out his own thing and uh, and, and get it together. When, when does it become overly concerning for you? Has it already become overly concerning, or, um, or where are you at with that? Well, I, I – I want him to fix this thing and you know Andy's talking with him and like I just got through saying about the change up he didn't hardly use any of them in the first you know two or three innings and that's a pitch once he started using them he was getting some big miss swings and misses so you can't forget about that and you have to use that pitch and you know those are all the things that when you're scuffling trying to find play things and trying to figure them out your mind's spinning out there, and and obviously, once you take a look, hopefully he'll watch the video and see how impressive his changeup was at the end. Then he'll go like, "That's that's the pitch that I need to use more early in the game to get me through." And um, you know, you, you sit there and say, "Well, this guy's been pitching for a while," but things happen when you're out on that mound, and you don't realize it until all of a sudden you figure out that, "Hey, I got to use that changeup," and he got some big outs with it later on and made some, you know, four swings and. You know, don't have an answer why you don't all of a sudden use it all the time. And he didn't either and had good conversation with him on the bench. And I think he understands. So maybe the next time out, he'll use his arsenal. For sure. And then looking to at pitching into the second half of games, like you said, um, with, with Casey, I mean, you know, obviously on Wednesday, he could be a guy that would have the opportunity to do that. I know that won't happen tomorrow, but is there a concern that maybe he'll try to do too much? I know you said that you talked to him about not doing too much. Um, but is there, a, is there a worry that maybe he'll try to do too much or try to push himself to, to get there um, rather than just kind of kind of pitching? Geez, that's an awful lot to throw at me and at him. I, I, I'm just, we're just excited that he's going to get on the mound, and I promise you we'll be talking to him about staying within himself. But you're talking about a, a pretty good, heady kid here that gets it and understands, and he knows what he has to do every day to – get out there on the mound. I think he's pretty sharp, so we shouldn't have to say an awful lot except enjoy this game, make your pitches, and use them all and go from there. So, uh, you know, set and try and talk about before he ever has his first start, all these things you need to remember. That I, I think there will be so much spinning in his head that – and if we can just calm him down, he'll be fine. This guy can really pitch. He's got a great arm. He's got great stuff. So, I think let's just wait and see what happens and go from there. Sure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks, Evan. That looks like the last question we have. Sigardi, thank you for your time this evening. We're joined by Tiger starter Matthew Boyd in just a second. Okay.